This is Susan Sandanamaker with Sundays of Future.net here at the Rochester, in, in, uh, Rochester New York, uh, the starting point of the American Solar Challenge in 2012. We have here Levi, who is actually graduated from Oregon State University, and this is the car for Oregon State University. So, Levi, um, are you uh, familiar with this particular car and with the workings of it? Yeah, I was involved in most of the mechanical design, the carbon fiber body, titanium chassis, uh, not so much the electronics because I'm a mechanical engineer, but um, yeah, I was involved from the very beginning. Oh, so how many years have you been working on the team? I've been on the team for just over three years, and um, this will probably be my last trip with them since I graduated in June. Okay, so that's what that explains why he has a purple shirt instead of orange t-shirt on. <laughs> well but done. he's uh, he actually worked on the car for about three good three years. Yeah, the the purple shirt's actually from Northwestern University. Oh, okay. They can't be here today because their car was having some technical issues. But um, the teams are, uh, for the most part, pretty good friends. So like we swap t-shirts and stuff like that and help each other out. I noticed that at the World Solar Challenge in uh, Australia, students were swapping uh, t-shirts. Yeah. Seems like a tradition in yeah, solar really cool races yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes. Oh, so can you tell us a little bit about, this is really cool looking car and the solar cell even looks a little bit different. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, the workings and yeah. also the, um, I know this year they changed the rules in terms of reducing the size of the solar cells down to six square meters, right? That's right. So how about this car, the Oregon State University? Do they have to modify the uh, this type of uh, surface area or anything else? Uh, we do have six square meters, um, and you might notice that most of the teams here are using the sun power cells. Mm -hmm. These are solar world monocrystalline cells, oh. and um, they're slightly less efficient, but we're still getting just about eight or nine hundred watts. But uh, the reason um, Oregon State University decided to go with the uh, monocrystalline cell is it, is it due to accessibility or is it un 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 any other reason? Yes, they were donated. Yes. Oh, okay, <laughs> very good reason. Very good. So what about the weight of the body? And, uh, the um, with the driver and everything, our car is only about 600 pounds, which is one of the lighter cars here. So that's a definite advantage and we have one of the slimmest profiles also. Was there any unanticipated problem that uh, Oregon State University have to deal with? A um, couple of electrical issues. We had to. We've been switching out our hub motor uh, quite a few times, just from internal things. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Hall effect sensors. Those sort of control the motor. Mm -hmm. We've had a couple of those fail on our our previous motor. So we're actually borrowing one from. Uh, Northwestern right now. So. Oh, okay, good. That's a cooperative yeah. uh, joint effort. That's really good. And uh, we notice that basically solar industry as a whole has that uh, trend. But um, any reason for the orange? Is this the school color for the yeah. Oregon? The school colors uh, for Oregon State are black and orange. Uh, very good choice. So okay. normally I'm wearing an orange shirt. <laughs> okay. What about in terms of uh, charging? I see a lot of the cars are set up to charge. Um, is there any limitation on number of hours that um, each car is allowed to charge, or on uh, the more you, you know, use your time on charging, the better off you'll be? Yeah, during the race, there's definitely limits on how much you can charge in the morning and the evening. So there actually, there's going to be an observer with every team, making sure that you don't charge too much. And so there's there's definitely some strict rules uh, during the race. So, okay, tell us, you've got um, supporting team, but also observer teams. I mean, observer cars, mm -hmm. observer vehicle. How many observer vehicles? Is it one per car or one per team? Uh, there's one observer per team, and they just sort of just ride with the team and take notes on everything we do and um, just make sure we're doing everything correctly. Well, thank you very much, Levi, for spending the time thank explaining you. for Oregon State University no for us. Thank you. Okay, take care. Signing off, Susan Sun Nanomaker with sunnisforfuture.net here at Rochester, New York with American Solar Challenge 2012.